Well, it is 5.31 p.m. It's July 13th. That means it's our regular session meeting for the month of July. So welcome, everybody. And we will uh, get this meeting called to order. We've got a very um, robust agenda tonight that we'll get through. So settle in here. Should be a lot of fun. And uh, we'll get started here with our uh, roll call of all of our members present. Uh, please unmute your microphones. And when I call your name, indicate by voice that you are here with us tonight. Councilman Deckard. Here. Councilor Hawk. Here. Councilor Iverson. Here. Councilor McKim. Here. Councilor Munson. Does not appear. Councilor Munson is with us right now. Uh, Councilor Wiltz. You can hear. Okay. So we have uh, a quorum. And we will now move forward with our agenda. Uh, up next is item number two, that's the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'll all stand, we will say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United flag States of America and to the Republic, Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation and under God. God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. And up next is public comment for items not on the agenda. And we'll check and see here if we have any members of the public who are with us uh, this evening who'd like to make comment for items not on the agenda. If so, Please indicate by using the raise hand feature uh, through Zoom. And it does not appear that we have any public comment tonight going once, going twice. Okay. We'll move on to item four, which is adoption of our agenda. Does anyone wish to add or remove items from uh, the agenda this evening? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion, questions? Have any public comment? Okay, we'll do a roll call vote, please. I think Megan is having issues, so I'm going to call the roll for you. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Councillor Deckard. Here, or yes, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Councillor McKim. Yes. Councillor Spoonmore. Yes. Councillor Iverson. Yes. Councillor Wilts. Yes. Councillor Hawk. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay, agenda is adopted. We'll move on now to item number five, which is department updates. Uh, do we have any departments uh, with us this evening who'd like to make an update? I see on the agenda here we have uh, our Youth Services Bureau, who had indicated, I think, uh, previously they'd like to make an update. But I'm not sure that I see anyone. Oh, here we go. And it looks like Mr. Malone, Deputy Director of the Youth Services Bureau, is with us. Welcome back, Mr. Malone. Always great to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm here today because there was a conversation when we had our finance and personnel coordinator position. Um, we had that turnover. We had two people in the same line uh, for a short period of time. Vicki Tevenaugh and uh, Michelle uh, did discuss this uh, via email a couple of times. And Michelle at one point said we uh, may need to come speak to the council to discuss uh, any budgetary issues that should arise, that might've arise from that. We, there was enough money in the line to cover both. We believed it was allowed. Um, and at this point, we are, no, we are out of that training period. The person trained for two weeks and she is no longer with the council. So we don't see any issue in terms of the budget, but we did want to be here um, since Michelle suggested that we might come and discuss with you to talk that, about any, uh, uh, any questions you might have or concerns. Um, so that's why I'm here today. Got it. Thank you, sir. Uh, Michelle, did you have some additional information that, that you wanted to share as well? Yes. Um, Mr. Malone, can you confirm? My understanding was that um, the former person was actually out um, 
taking benefit time during this time of transition. Is that true? The former person did take one week off. Uh, she was get um, uh, she had a scheduled vacation. She was going to leave June second, but because we had such a hard time filling the role, she ended up prolonging to fulfill the necessary tasks until we got her replacement, and then to stay on for a period of time while training. That when we ended up hiring the person, she ended up starting, and then the woman was uh, our uh, Jill was getting married and going on her honeymoon, and then she was going to come back and complete training. And that is um, what happened. So there was a week there where Jill was not in the office, but I do believe, and I do believe she took benefit. Got it. Okay. So do we do we have existing policies that are addressing this type of situation? I don't know who. Currently, no, uh, we do not. Um, but State Board of Accounts is wanting us to ensure that you are aware uh, when there is transitional training at, in the period of time, because uh, we have one line that serves one position. And when you have two names in there for an extended period of time, that clarity kind of dissolves a little bit when they are uh, working on the um, audit. And so, uh, We've been asked to just make sure that you are made aware of these uh, transitional times and that there is enough money uh, within uh -huh. those lines without having to ask for an additional because of the cross training. And I, as I recall, I think this has come up in the past, right? Where we actually dealt with it ahead of time. We created an additional line to pay the you know, cross training time out of, is that right? That is correct. Okay, so that so maybe we need to kind of uh, memorialize that policy in some way so that there's not confusion from our departments when these types of situations come up again. I'm sure they will, and it's it's inevitable that we're going to have some turnover, and uh, it would be good to get some guidance out. I'm sure that the <laughs> Youth Services Bureau didn't intend to to do anything that was not uh, uh, aligned with our normal practices, but. Uh, is that something that we could put together? Yeah, I believe so. I can work with Margie and it's something we can um, either um, probably add to our salary ordinance or something like that. Okay. Um, Ms. Ms. Rice, is that, do you have any suggestions on what might be best there? Yeah, sorry, I had to get my camera out. Yeah, I think, I'm kind of wondering if we don't want within, and this may be a crazy idea, but I'll throw it out there, it, within budgets to have sort of a training line in an O1 in the 01 category, so departments could move money within the 01 category and then have our salary ordinance match it. So as departments need to need that flexibility can already just be built in as a line. It can be zero in the budget, but then it can be moved around as necessary. Got it, yeah. And that, that's easy to do as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hawk, did you have a question? Yeah, we would just have to be very uh, careful to make sure that uh, no one thought that they could just use that for additional training and pay people to go on the training. So I think we need to give that some thought before we. Maybe it's called transition or something like that. Transition. I think something. Some, call it something besides training, maybe. Right. I, I think, think the one that I had before was transitional training or something like that. I like that. That, that we use from the mobile. highway. Right. makes it makes it very clear mm -hmm. yeah okay. and it it's nice to if we can get the departments to let us know the length of time um, because like I said you know I'm not sure exactly when in the YSB when one started and the other one um, ended but you know they're also receiving some benefit time in there you know during this training transitional time so mm -hmm. Um, Mr. Decker, did I see your hand yeah. earlier? And then Ms. Hawk? Yeah, I'll be the record. I, I'm seeing Ms. Uh, Council, Councilor Munson has joined, so she's here with us. I just really quickly want to say, I, I, I think that whatever our policy reflects, it should uh, truly think and, and honor a person that would do a transition. Some positions, I think, need transition more than others and also make that an available avenue for a department that that could need it that could be a real crucial thing as opposed to someone saying ah, i you know i'm not responsible for 
that and here's my end date. Um, I don't know that that always benefits the, the people of the county. Yeah, sometimes they sometimes people will tell them they're done on a Friday, you know, kind of thing. But sometimes there are some that do, you know, plan ahead and and this kind of thing. So when it happens, it would be nice to know ahead of time. Yep. Okay. Uh, who else? Ms. Hawk, did you have another question? Right. Um, I really think it, whenever possible, it should be run by the council to begin with because uh, what the transitional time was two months or something. Yeah. This, this is a budgetary question. And I, you know, might might do well to have a, a further chat about this at a work session or something. We just don't want to make more problems for ourselves. And I think there's a way that we can work this out. Be fine. Yep. No, I, I agree. And we can probably do some of the legwork ahead of time, uh, and then set this for a. Uh, um, I would imagine probably a pretty short discussion at a work session that we can, okay. um, you know, maybe adopt something official. Does that sound good, Michelle? Yes, I okay. appreciate that. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Malone, did you have anything else for us? No, if there are no other questions, obviously we were not intending to do anything incorrectly. <laughs> we, we wanted, we, it's something we had done in the past and, and Michelle was, uh, let us know that, that that was incorrect and thought we should come and discuss it. So we are, um, we'll do whatever it takes. And we are really happy that uh, the, the previous person was willing to stay and provide a couple of weeks of training because that was very helpful to the next person coming in. So thank you so much for your time. Very good. Thank you, sir. And uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Okay. Um, any, do we have any further departmental updates uh, for council this evening? It looks like we have. Um, I see some department heads and other elected officials. Is there anybody who would like to provide an update? Okay, I guess not. So that will conclude our um, department updates this evening. We'll move on to item number six. Do we have any council members uh, who'd like to provi uh, provide uh, updates uh, from their liaisons assignments this evening? I do not have it other than uh, Mr. Deckard and I had a, a very productive uh, conversation with uh, the prosecutor's office today uh, regarding their budgets. And so I just wanted to uh, send a reminder to all uh, council members. Now is the time to be thinking about um, getting in touch with uh, your, your various uh, departments and elected officials that you liaison with to talk about budgets. I think that's always very helpful to uh, have some of those conversations uh, ahead of time as they're thinking about uh, the uh, budgets that they're going to be presenting to us. Uh, yes, Ms. Hawk. Uh, yes, I, I did have a conversation today with uh, a constituent who had some concerns that the salary uh, that is quoted in the budget uh, preparation was far different from the salary that is quoted on the state site, hmm. which, which, um, so we might all want to just take a look at that and see why it's wildly off by, you know, 20 some thousand dollars or something. Because uh, it being paid at a two different. Or they're under. getting paid over time and it wasn't included yeah. in the salaries or, or, for, or, or maybe for whatever reason. But I, I think it's wise for us to just take a look at that and be prepared because the public is becoming more and more involved and um, interested in what we're doing, and we need to be prepared. Okay, and, and Ms. Shell, we may uh, it may be good. I don't want to you know name specific names and and those folks, uh, but maybe follow up with uh, Councillor Hawk after the meeting so we can get a better understanding of of uh, what what may be going on there. Did you have? Uh, uh, comment, Michelle? Yes, I just want to let you know that uh, starting tomorrow, the departments will start receiving their 2022 budget workbooks. So, um, and um, also with instructions. And so within those instructions, I'm asking the departments to reach out to their liaisons to go over their budgets. So 
it was timely that you said that earlier. So it's the budget season is upon us. Okay. Any other uh, updates or liaison reports? Okay. Very good. Now we will move on to item seven. And we have uh, a report from Efrat Pfefferman, who is uh, Executive Director, United Way, Monroe <laughs> County. Always great to have you joining us. She's going to give us an update here on the Housing Insecurity Working Group. I know we have had uh, a number of council members, uh, I believe uh, Mr. McKim, uh, Ms. Wiltz, um, and Mr. Iverson, who have been actively engaged and participating in that working group. Uh, they have uh, developed, I believe, some, some recommendations. Um, not sure if we're going to get into all of those, but uh, Ms. Pfefferman is here to give us an update on the status of the working group. So welcome and, and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. Um, and always a, an honor to be here um, addressing the council. And I echo uh, the gratitude for the council members and Commissioner um, Githens and other county staff who have uh, participated um, in these working groups. In fact, there were some from the criminal justice side of things. So um, we had good representation from Monroe County, um, as well as support from the start for this. So um, here we are six months later. Um, for, for some background context, um, early this year, around January or even December, right before then, um, United Way and the Community Foundation um, were asked to take a lead in the community with this issue of homelessness and housing insecurity. Um, and so we um, began by convening um, funders and service providers, elected officials and other stakeholders in um, some conversations. And from there, um, took it forward into some next steps, um, including formalizing the work a little more with a, a project manager, which Monroe County helped fund, um, as did some other entities, uh, local government entities in, in the community. And so together, um, this work was supported by, by you and, and others, and, and we're really grateful for that and um, wanted to fill you in on where we are and talk next steps as well. So um, as you mentioned, the committees that, uh, well, I'll back up even further. We, we, we looked at our community's heading home plan that was written in 2014 as a basis for the work and conversations. And um, that plan was created out of the, uh, the auspices of the South Central Indiana Housing Network, uh, which is a network of service providers, mostly shelters, transitional housing, um, places like that. And we, we looked at that and um, assessed ourselves on the progress made as a community on that plan, because many of us were involved in that plan. I know the county was, as were, was United Way and the Community Foundation. And as we assessed ourselves on progress made on that plan, um, you know, we admittedly realized that where um, items, objectives needed broad collaboration, we weren't doing really well as a community. Where they were, where the objectives were really more um, in the hands of say one agency provider like New Hope for Families talking about family shelter expansion, we're doing great. And so the missing piece was really um, the leadership needed to execute a plan and gather the community and marshal resources behind it. And so what's really been key from the start of this whole process is that I think everyone understood that and said, yeah, we can see, you know, the plan kind of went on a shelf because there's no dedicated staff to it. There's no dedicated entity. The, the South Central Indiana Housing Network's a great um, organization, but it's comprised of people who are already running agencies full time. <laughs> um, and so this was this is not their full time job. It's a monthly meeting they attend and they're uh, looking at how to house people who have become homeless or are homeless as their main objective. So uh, the commitment was there, I think, um, and the consensus was there from the start of this work. And so um, we assessed ourselves, we realized we, 
we have some work to do, but also that it's been a few years and that it's time to update the plan. And so the committees that broke up um, into groups and, and did some further investigation um, not only are helping to update the plan, but also make, make recommendations on the implementation of the plan. And so I wanted to take you through that um, and share the exciting news that we're, we're almost there with the final draft of the Heading Home Plan. There's a meeting Thursday um, of that subcommittee, and uh, we have a draft. We hope to finalize it soon and then be able to release it to the community. So you're getting a sneak preview tonight. Um, and then you'll see this released uh, very soon. Uh, the Heading Home Plan has three broad goals of making homelessness in our region rare, brief, and non-repeating. Um, the thing about that is when you make homelessness rare, you also kind of tackle the other two things and other way around. So um, some of these strategies might be under one of those goals, but they really kind of work at all three, if that makes sense. And when we talk about making homelessness rare um, and investing in strategies to, to prevent homelessness, uh, we came up with four that all have a lot more detail under them, and that will be in the plan that we share out. But the strategies are increasing the housing stock for um, the most low income of households through different um, means, incentivizing landlords to prioritize low income housing. So there's ways that other communities are doing that um, with incentives, with risk mitigation funds, um, and just education and outreach. Um, initiating practices to assist households in preventing homelessness. So there's some diversionary practices that we can take on as a community there, as well as expanding um, emergency rent mortgage assistance as we've done in the pandemic, but maintaining supports like that. Uh, and then expanding healthcare access, um, including helping people connect to Medicaid, Medicare, other um, things that, that they're um, entitled to, um, as well as just access to that primary health care and mental health care, because often um, a health care emergency can sort of be a downward spiral for a family or an individual that, um, you know, if they're not insured or um, even if they're insured, that can be a little tough to, to take a big unexpected hit, right? And then employment and other things are usually tied to health. Uh, the second goal of making homelessness brief um, is really um, shifting our community to a housing first approach and, and a lot of strategies related to that. Um, we, we've gone in this direction um, from what's called housing readiness model that used to be popular decades back and now um, HUD and, and really the nation has gone towards um, I identifying that um, housing first, meaning when a person um, is in homelessness, um, it used to be that we'd ask them to do things like, well, you know, let's get you a job, let's get your uh, custody, you know, childcare issues taken care of, custody, family law issues taken care of, and then we'll house you. And um, the problem with that model is, you know, if you think about it, it's really intuitive. If you don't know where you're sleeping that night or, or if that situation is, is not stable, you're really not ready to tackle much else in your life. And the, the research and data from the housing first model where we take someone, we worry about housing first, um, we see that they are then more successful with everything else, including their health, their employment, their relationships, because that, that primary basic need is off, off of their minds, right? Um, the Crawford Homes in town is a, a model like that. And then Beacon also does what they call rapid rehousing, um, which, which recognizes that the longer someone is in homelessness, the harder it is to get them stabilized. So if someone falls into homelessness or a family falls into homelessness, the faster you can get them stabilized in a, in a, a house or a, a program that, that is housing related, um, the better their outcome in the long term. 
So we have some shifting to do as a community to get there, including things like training case managers and educating agencies on this um, and coordinating as service providers around this. Mo most service providers are already following this model, but um, we're not all there and we're not all kind of coordinating on that. So um, the strategies that you see here have a lot to do with that. Um, continue to use transitional housing strategically for certain populations that need it. And um, HUD and others recognize that transitional housing um, is best for, um, say, survivors of domestic violence, uh, folks with substance use disorder, unaccompanied youth. So um, the county's uh, shelter, uh, the youth shelter is, is a transitional housing facility. Uh, Middleway Houses, The Rise is a transitional housing facility. Places like Amethyst House, that's, that's what transitional housing is as opposed to um, permanent housing. Um, I won't read all of this, there's a little jargon in here, but stop me anytime or I'll, I'll pause after all of this and see if you have any questions. But the third goal uh, to make homelessness non-repeating um, is talking about investing in the supportive services that improve the likelihood of long-term stability. And um, some of the other strategies from the other goals really play a role in this. We talked a lot about case management and having case management that follows people even after they leave a program. Because right now, um, you know, if a township trustee helps someone out uh, or if say New Hope for Families houses a family, um, it kind of drops off from there. And if we could invest in case management that checks in with people um, after they've left a program, even if it's just, you know, a couple times a year, I think we could catch um, some situations that put people at risk of, of lapsing back into housing instability and homelessness. Um, there's a strategy here specifically about folks with substance use disorder because there is there is an overlap there between homelessness and SUD um, and recognizing that and expanding supports there um, is is a priority and so that's really the 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 heading home plan draft in a nutshell I'll pause there um, and then talk about implementation and so see if you have any questions on the heading home plan and those Thank have you been in the committee, feel free to jump in if you feel I'm like I'm missing anything critical here. Sure, great, thank you. Are there any questions at this point or um, remarks or comments that, that anybody has? It looked like Marty before had had her hand up, but. I, yeah, I oh, did, sure, Ms. Hawk, yes. Right, well, it, to begin, when you were mentioning the different places that was more transitional housing, uh, I wondered if that would include the New Hope for Families, and and I think you did say yes, it was that included those folks. Yes, New Hope for Families, um, the the shelter is, I guess you would call that transitional housing, and then they also follow the housing first model of trying to house people in permanent housing as as soon as they can. What about Wheeler Mission? What what? Wheeler as an emergency, an emergency shelter, and actually, you know, I, I, I'm actually now hesitating because I think New Hope may actually be a family shelter, not a transitional housing program. It's, it's almost like a hybrid, I would say, because some people can stay in in New Hope for many, many months, and others just need it for a few weeks. Um, so it's it's more the family shelter, and and I don't know that I should call it a transitional housing program like the other ones. Um, Wheeler Missions is an emergency shelter, and so is um, Friends Place. Um, and so shelters are definitely important in this ecosystem, but um, I really like to use, I borrow from Emily Pike on this all the time, the analogy of healthcare and how you need an emergency room and an ER, but that's not gonna fix the long-term issues. So we have our ERs, we have our shelters, um, and we don't, we don't wanna stop investing in those because people do need that. But we have a bottleneck to, the, to permanent, supportive, safe housing. And that's what this long-term plan is more focused on, um, 
while we maintain our shelter capacity and the wonderful services that they all provide. Do we have a list of the ones that the shelter situations where they have a time frame which they can only stay like I read someplace or heard one of the shelters they could only be there for 30 days and then they had to leave. Is that correct? Um, we have that all mapped out thanks to one of the committees um, in terms of the inventory. So yeah, when we release the uh, full plan, I can send that along or I can actually just send that along to you directly if you'd like. Um, the, the Map and Gap group did a nice job of mapping out resources in our community, including the different types of housing and shelter programs. Great. Any other questions or comments? Okay. okay. I think we can. Yeah. So I'll, I'll on. talk next steps and then see if you have any questions there. Um, one of the committees uh, was called Promising Practices. And that one really looked at what other communities have been doing successfully to um, reduce and eliminate homelessness and housing instability. Um, and they came up with a set of recommendations based on, on their research. Um, and I will go through those. Um, so in terms of an implementation structure, this, this came from the Promising Practices Committee. They, um, they saw that other communities really had an entity dedicated to this, this issue um, and, and a plan and the implementation of a plan and it, wasn't necessarily local government because local government has boundaries, right? Um, the city has its, you know, boundaries and the county does too. Um, United Way has three and a half counties and the community foundation um, has a broad network through, you know, the ROI work that they do. So we were looking at, at us too and I, I think it ended up being pointed at United Way as making the most sense. Um, it, we can incubate something and then determine a couple years later if it spins off into its own nonprofit like some other communities have done. Um, but housing it um, in an entity like United Way that you know has the mission and has the geographic region because this issue doesn't have a geographic boundary around Monroe County, right? Um, and when we talk about working with landlords um, to incentivize rentals, we're envisioning that we're talking, you know, if someone came here from Spencer, let's talk to landlords in Spencer. If they came here from Bedford, let's reach out to Bedford and, and do this work. Um, we, we know we can't absorb everyone uh, that comes here for help, right? So recognizing the regionalism piece of this was very um, important along the way. Uh, they recommended hiring two um, full-time staff to manage the plan and oversee the implementation, um, a director and an assistant director of sorts. Um, there's, you know, in the, in the job descriptions that we're drafting, there's the focus on landlord outreach and relationships. There's a big focus on data collection and building a dashboard for the community so that we can track our progress. Um, and share that with the community. And that's, you know, that's a job <laughs> by itself. Uh, we'll probably need some consultant to help with the launch of that, but then to maintain that, um, to liaison with um, different entities where there's overlap, like the housing network, uh, the housing authorities throughout the region, um, different counties, um, to, to maintain a coalition and to build that coalition um, we have that working group, but um, the recommendations being made to broaden that into a coalition, which other communities who seem to have success in this issue have done. Uh, so a coalition that includes every sector, our business sector, our faith communities, our schools, um, universities, not just service providers and funders and local government, which is um, where we started from. And then to, you know, along with the broad coalition, um, a core council that sort of serves as a board of directors for the new entity. Uh, we, we have that small advisory group now with Commissioner Giffens representing the county on that. Um, so that could kind of serve 
as something that we can broaden out into a, a core council. Those are the recommendations on implementation. And then um, each committee had some more specific recommendations that I just highlighted here um, in terms of their priorities. The data and dashboard, um, I mentioned um, we'd probably need some help with a consultant to develop it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of different data um, being collected currently by providers, but it doesn't all mesh and there's a lot of gaps too. Um, and then staff management to maintain that, um, to troubleshoot it, that was a priority for this subcommittee. The map and gap one um, is the one that identified the, the real need for the um, infrastructure with, with the landlord relations, support for that, as well as case management in our community. And then the promising practices um, is the one that made the recommendations on the implementation, uh, identifying that housing first needs some educational trainings for staff as well as the community, and that that all takes um, someone you know focused on on that. And yeah, I think that's that's really um, where we left it. Um, and, and really, I just wanted to share that. Um, so I think I shared that we're, we're almost there with the final draft that we can release to the community. And while we're doing that, we are also um, starting to have those conversations about seeking support from the community for funding that work ahead, um, which I'm, I'm sure um, we will talk about a little more with, with council when the time is right. Uh, I know we've had some, some preliminary conversations and we've done that with other um, local government entities as well as assessed what United Way and the Community Foundation and our donor and supporter base might be able to contribute so that we have um, a long-term sustained commitment to this work because as you can see, it's not, um, it's not a problem we're gonna see solved in a few months or even a you know a year uh, this is sort of longer term work that um, needs to be maintained and 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 um expanded and and you know have the whole community behind it so um that's that's where we are with the work and i just wanted to really stress that um, without your early support for the project management of this we wouldn't be here in six months uh, the committees have done a tremendous job of research, meet, weekly meetings, um, writing, all of that stuff. And um, there seems to be a lot of interest from the community, of course, in seeing the momentum continue uh, to develop for this. And um, we're, we're optimistic that all of these conditions um, are right in the community to to make progress so that we don't find ourselves here again in seven years saying, well, what do we need to do? <laughs> Cause I think, I think we were there in 2013, 14. We haven't, we had a great plan. We just didn't put um, the resources behind it to see it actually implemented. All right, very good. Well, uh, go ahead. Please. I'll just leave that as the final one in case anyone has any questions for us. Yeah, and thank you so much for um, for coming here and sharing this information with us tonight and to everybody uh, who's been working on uh, these plans, uh, Ms. Peterson with the uh, Community Foundation and, and you, Afrat, and all of the staff and, and support and the uh, participants in the committees. I really hope that Monroe County can play a meaningful role in uh, advancing this plan uh, in the future. So uh, certainly look forward to continued conversations on that. Um, but I do think it's, it's, it's a, it's very important. Um, so let's check now and see if there's other uh, council members who have any comments or questions for you. Uh, it looks like Mr. Iverson has his hand up. Yeah, thank you so much for presenting tonight. Really glad that you could make it. Um, I wanted to add one thing is, is that the method by which these committees came together was so collaborative. Uh, and I think that's really gonna provide that basis of success 
so that we can really tackle um, this, this community issue in a community-wide fashion. And, and I'll just share one anecdote uh, just now, and I won't take up too much time, but uh, when, when I first came onto the committee, um, we made a, a very um, conscious decision to pair up a county councilman with a city councilman. And I know uh, council member Wiltz had the same experience where um, I think you were paired with a, a city councilwoman. Um, and, and that was a great experience where we were able to come together and work together to contact other uh, cities across the United States to come up with these best practices that you've been presenting tonight. So I really wanted to publicly praise you for setting up that structure that I think is gonna really set us up for success. Well, thank you. I mean, I, I think it really stems from both county and city initially coming you know, to the table and saying, we all need to, to do this together, right? Um, everyone was in agreement on that. And so um, I, we um, saw that um, collaboration in every committee, um, including the advisory committee, um, from the start and, and yeah, in, in each of the committees. And I, I, I enjoyed seeing how like it was very um, refreshing for everyone to have that opportunity to, to work together so closely on an issue that affects everyone. So um, thank you. Thanks for sharing that, that observation from your end. Great. Any further questions or comments from council? Um, as well, yes. Well, um, Peter kind of stole my whole thunder on how awesome the process was because um, I definitely have the same uh, experience. But um, one of the things that I know the Promising Practices uh, Committee talked a lot about was making sure there was representation from those who have lived experience with homelessness um, on some of these uh, advisory groups. And um, I'm hoping, I'm assuming that that is reflected in the plan, but if you could speak to that a little bit, that'd be great. Thank you. I think I inadvertently forgot that. And I also, I feel like I should have from the start also um, given props to some other people. So I'll come back to that. Um, yes, absolutely. We, um, we worked with the Bloomington Homeless Coalition um, to get some feedback along the way on the process. And then also, um, the I think it was the Map and Gap Committee uh, crafted a survey that a representative from the BHC, the Homeless Coalition, agreed to take out in print form uh, to folks who are unhoused and get some feedback from them. Um, and he actually collected um, these surveys and brought them back to the committee. Um, we met with them. It was, hard, it was hard for folks to make the committee meetings. So we worked creatively to get input through other means. And I think that input was extremely valuable um, and helped shed some light on some, some gaps, some glaring gaps that we might not think about, but um, someone who's trying to access resources and services could tell you like right away, here's, here's all the things. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, and we'll continue to, um, to make sure that um, the, the, the voices of those who are impacted the most by the issue um, and, and often have, you know, the most relevant and insightful information um, is at the, the center of all this. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Anything further from council? Okay, well, again, Ms. Pfefferman, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, it was great to hear from you and we look forward to, to keeping in touch, okay? Thank you. And um, I wanna give Tina Peterson a big shout out um, for being my co-collaborator in this and for uh, the project manager, Brittany Kurt, because without her, we would not have gotten this far and just keeping all those committees like organized and moving along and bringing you know, information forward. She's been um, just wonderful to work with and, and um, 
so has everyone who has uh, volunteered their time on these committees um, and, and in support of this project. So a lot of good work ahead. I'm sure we'll um, look for, you know, continued engagement from anyone who wants to, um, to bring it forward and uh, just know how much that's appreciated and how much your support and leadership on this issue is appreciated. We, we would not be making this progress without the county council and the county commissioners and, and all of you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, definitely, let's stay in touch, okay? Thank you. Have All a good right. evening. Have a good evening. Okay, um, so that will conclude item seven. We'll now move on to item eight, which is an approval of resolution 2021-33. Uh, Council, I move, no worries. I, I move to approve resolution 2021-33 an extension of the interlocal agreement made with the Monroe County Trustee Corporation to deliver relief from immediate and long-term COVID-19 economic impacts. Um, going to just do a synopsis reading here real quick for you. Uh, resolution 2021-33 to approve an interlocal extension to the agreement with the Monroe County Township Trustees Corporation now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of Monroe County, Indiana, as follows. We find that the attached interlocal agreement, which is incorporated herein as Exhibit A, is necessary to serve the residents of Monroe County to better understand the City of Bloomington's proposed. This doesn't seem to have the right text to it. That's what was forwarded to me. It is? Okay. All right. Is necessary to serve the residents of Monroe County to better understand the City of Bloomington's proposed annexation. We hereby approve the interlocal agreement approved this 7th day of July 2021 by the Board of Commissioners of Monroe uh, County. I think, I think that that probably is not right. Jeff Cockrell, are you on here? That's just not right. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's Jeff, not that no, the their commissioners had substituted um, at the last minute um, the interlocal on their agenda, and it sounds like that maybe what got submitted to you was not the right. Uh, but Jeff is Jeff Cockrell on here. He was he was on the agenda to present. If not, I can give a, a quick summary of what this is, and. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I mean, because that's all I've received. Yeah. Hold on one sec. I don't, I don't see how we could vote on it if we don't. No. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you table that, um, and we can take this up at the work session. There's not a rush. There's, okay. there's already funding in place for, um, you know, for it. Um, you've already remember you already appropriated the funding, so. Right. We can we can get this and if necessary, uh, you know, backdate it to to tonight when you approve it at the work session. Okay. Does that sound like a plan or do shall you I, shall I um, yeah. withdraw my motion and move the table? This Indefinitely. Session? Indefinitely. We need a second. second. Okay. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any public comment? All right. We'll do a roll call vote. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Stonewall? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wells? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Okay. We will um, now move on to item nine. This one I've looked at. <laughs> Um, Council, I move to approve resolution 2021-22 to support carbon fee and dividend legislation. 
I will click to click to that one real quick. Um, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Monroe County, Indiana Council that one, the Monroe County Council urges the United States Congress to enact without delay carbon fee and dividend legislation and supports the immediate passage of such legislation. Two, okay. the Sorry. there's three Sorry. of them. Two, the council directs the Monroe County Auditor to send a certified copy of this resolution to our United States congressional delegates and to President Joe Biden. Three, the council urges the Monroe County Environmental Commission to monitor the activities of Congress and to report back to the council on at least a biannual basis to update the council and to provide suggestions to the council and the public about what steps may be taken to further encourage carbon fee and dividend legislation and to promote this topic. Adopted this day, this uh, day of July 13th, 2021 by the County Council in Monroe County, Indiana. Second. Okay. And we have the resolution that's been Red, do we have any questions or discussion on this? Mr. Iverson, yes. Yeah, I, I uh, have been talking with uh, Mr. Hendon, Nolan Hendon, who's on the agenda, and he sends his regrets that he couldn't make it tonight. So uh, as liaison to the Environmental Commission, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. I think the whereas clauses are pretty self-explanatory. Um, and uh, I, you'll also notice that the Environmental Commission uh, passed this resolution way back in January. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Got it. Okay, Ms. Munson, yes. Yes, I want to uh, also recognize the contribution uh, of Lee Amon and Jeffrey White for bringing this issue to uh, county government and the Environmental Commission. And this is something that I certainly support, but I'm very glad for the uh, interests of the Environmental Commission in tracking this issue and in uh, regularly reporting to the council. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Munson. Any other questions or comments? All right, I too am happy to support this and look forward to doing so. Uh, do we have any public comment? Seeing none, we will take a roll call vote, please. On the motion to approve resolution 2021-22, Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Wiltz? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor Spoonmore? Yes. Motion passed six to zero to one. Okay. And up next will be item 10. This will be a midpoint hire request. Council, I move to approve the surveyor's request for a midpoint hire of the survey technician position in fund 1000-0006 general fund, 50% split, and in fund 1202 dash 0000 corner perpetuation 50% split and to simultaneously amend the 2021 salary ordinance account 12009 survey technician 35 hours pat one non-exempt to a midpoint higher status second okay we have a motion and a second and we have county surveyor uh mr enright randolph with us here this evening welcome sir I believe we're having some audio issues. That are... Let's see. There we go. There we go. All right. Um, sometimes I have to pull the mic down and sometimes I can leave it tucked up. Um, I'm here to uh, answer any uh, questions that uh, may be uh, asked and um, ultimately uh, ask for the council support. Um, this uh, gentleman uh, has uh, uh, numerous years of uh, service in uh, 
the county government side of things. Um, I think one thing that is uh, very uh, important to know is that uh, we have a lot of process that are unique to this office. So you're not going to come in uh, well equipped with certain procedures and um, things of that nature as far as entering in our database following the way that we uh, have unique identifiers for our section corners and um, other uh, very uh, customized uh, processes that we have actually uh, developed an architect here in the office internally so yeah, very good uh, do we have any questions uh, for mr. Enright Randolph on this request uh, Ms. Hawk um, I just wanted to verify isn't this the one that um, Michelle had uh, sent out a concern that maybe the time frame spent um, was not in relationship to this job description. I may be getting that mixed up with another one. I think that's uh, the next one, isn't it? Yeah, M Michelle just shook her head no. I think uh, the, the one point, Marty, that uh, you might be um, coupling together is that we accidentally put this on your agenda last month, and uh, that was just a miscommunication internally. Uh, the, the employee uh, was where, well aware of that this was going to be the time I came to spoke to council for the midpoint hire request. So um, as far as the communication goes to the employee, they're, they're, they're on the same page, but that might be kind of what you're thinking. No, I had I had it mixed up with another one. I apologize. It's it's the next request. Right. I'm sorry. Okay. I can't be right about everything. <laughs> okay. Any further uh, questions or, or comments on this request? All right. Uh, we'll we'll see if there's any public comment does not appear there's any public comment, so we'll take a roll call vote. Motion to approve the midpoint hire and amend the 2021 salary ordinance. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor McKim. Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, and up next is item 10B, another uh, midpoint hire request from the prosecutor's office. Council, I move to approve the prosecutor's request for a public safety lit prosecutor uh, midpoint hire in I believe the domestic violence position in fund 1170-0009 public safety lit dash prosecutor 50% split and in fund 8123-9621 stop grant 50% split and to simultaneously amend the 2021 salary ordinance uh, account 13015 deputy prosecutor 35 hours EXE2 exempt to a midpoint higher status. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, welcome, Prosecutor Oliphant. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I was having mute problems over here. Um, hi, thanks for having me. So I have a candidate that I have offered the domestic violence deputy prosecutor position to. Um, this candidate has knowledge, skills, and abilities above those that we would expect from a, from a new hire in this, in this position. Um, the candidate has a 21-year legal career. Um, most of it has been spent helping victims of domestic violence and sexual assault here in Indiana. I'm going to start first with her litigation experience. Uh, she was a deputy attorney general for three years. Uh, in that role, she prosecuted the suspensions of licenses for health professionals in the medical licensing division. 
She specialized in cases that were related to sexual misconduct by licensed health professionals, and often those were involving high profile physician cases. Um, in that role, she had litigation against some of the most prestigious uh, and well-known criminal defense attorneys uh, of the time in Indianapolis. Um, after that, uh, later she was a Marion County domestic violence prosecutor for two years. Um, in that role, she tried six cases to jury, but she tried over 200 bench trials in that role. Um, after that, she uh, worked as an associate attorney at the Stafford Law Office for three years. That's uh, Judge Stafford's uh, previous office, um, where she litigated divorce, paternity, child support, adoption, and guardianship matters. Um, her focus was on domestic violence survivor rep representation. So, um, you know, oftentimes, uh, in these relationships with domestic violence, there's a lot of civil collateral matters such as divorce and child custody. And so she, she dealt with a lot of those collateral matters. Uh, in the last year, she's been working as an administrative law judge for uh, the Indiana Department of Workforce Development. She's heard about 136 unemployment appeals per month, and she's had to write opinions on those cases. Uh, the most exciting experience um, from my, where I'm standing is her time as director of legal services at Turning Point. Uh, she was there as a director for 11 years, and that's the Domestic Violence Services Agency in Columbus, Indiana. So uh, similar to Middleway House here in Monroe County. Um, in that role, she provided direct services to survivors. She trained police, prosecutors, and community partners on best practices in the field of domestic violence prosecution. She was recognized by the Indiana Coalition Against Domestic Violence in 2009 as Domestic Violence Professional of the Year because she created and led the first regional domestic violence summits in Columbus. Um, she worked with community partners, such as judges, prosecutors, police, advocates, Department of Child Services, religious leaders in the community, and private attorneys to improve domestic violence response in a 12-county service area. She was a founding and active member of the Brown and Bartholomew County Domestic Violence Task Forces for about 10 years. And she wrote the first successful uh, VAWA, that's Violence Against Women Act, grant um, for District 11 Legal Aid, which provided three years of funding for a full-time domestic violence family law attorney. In the early 2000s, this candidate pioneered the Indiana Domestic Violence Expert Witness Movement. She wrote curriculum and taught advocates and prosecutors to work together to educate jurors on the unique issues presented in domestic violence cases. Um, this, you know, this candidate really is exceptional. She has eight years of litigation experience, um, five of which were spent as a government attorney enforcing the laws of the state of Indiana. And while litigation skills are necessary, important, and valuable, um, I'm excited about uh, the best practices specifically relevant to domestic violence prosecution. It's nationally and locally recognized that the most effective approach to domestic violence is a community-based approach using lots of partners um, inside and outside of law enforcement. This candidate has proven her ability to work with community partners, to build and work with coalitions, and to provide a survivor-centered approach to the work. She has experience with the collateral consequences of domestic violence, um, everything from housing, child custody, protective orders, and other civil and even non-legal matters. Um, she studied, developed, and taught the best practices for domestic violence prosecution um, across the state of Indiana for, for many years now, since the 90s. And her knowledge, skills, and abilities are well beyond that uh, we would expect for, for someone for this kind of position. So um, that's, that's the gist of my... Uh, presentation. Are there any questions from council? Great, thank you. Uh, let's check and see if we have any questions uh, on the request. May, yeah, uh, Mr. McKim? It's not really a question. It's just more a comment of just how, how kind of rigid our 
um, classification and grading system is. And I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to support this, even, uh, even though I think by the, you know, the absolute letter of the law, it's kind of on the margin. But I think, like I said, it just shows that our, our system needs to be more flexible and give department heads a little more flexibility in, in offering increased compensation to particularly strong candidates, uh, particularly in a competitive work environment. So. Um, okay, Mr. Deckard, Ms. Wilts, and then Ms. Hawk. Thank, thank and you. Thank you, Mr. McKim, for those comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I agree with Councillor McKim. And, you know, beyond all the victim advocacy and prosecutors' work in Marion County, the thing that really stood out to me in that long list is a former Deputy Attorney General. And for anyone that's seen, them in action that's not um that's not something to scoff at that is a rigorous job i think we might have had a couple ags here or there that i'm not so sure about but a deputy ag that is a workhorse and certainly i think like councillor mckim is saying we want to look at our process so that this county and the people in it are best represented getting the people we need to get for these jobs and and not a technicality that we might prevent that down the road Thank you, sir. Um, Ms. Wilts. Um, I was really, really, really not going to vote yes on this um, because I was sticking with the rules and darn it. But um, then you then you said that deputy attorney general and I had trouble accessing the packet this week. So I was that in there and I missed it in the the stuff that was submitted. Regardless. It certain, yeah, it was certainly in her resume, um, which was attached. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if we put it necessarily in our, our blurbs on yeah. the application sheet. Well, that's certainly impressive, as Councillor Deckard said. So I will support this as well. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hawk? Uh, yes. First of all, I want to uh, give a shout out to Michelle, who did homework and sent us the information that she, you know, that we appreciate that she's watching out for us. And I think she did an excellent job at that. Uh, and I was prepared to say, not this, not this time. We're, we're you know, we're going to stick to the rules. The prosecutor of it made a good case, uh, presented the case well. And I've had to say for someone who lost a family member before I was even born to domestic violence. I think it's so important that we take this so seriously, that we have someone who cares and who will do what they can to, to try to protect uh, the people of this county. So um, I didn't come into the meeting thinking I was gonna vote in favor, uh, but, and, and perhaps we need to take a, a harder look at the rules because what Michelle said to us was exactly following the rules. So we need to take a look at the rules. We don't like the rules. Absolutely. I fully agree with uh, Ms. Hawk and Mr. McKim there. And the Prosecutor Oliphant, I mean, by nature, is gonna be very skilled at making a good case, but uh, <laughs> this, this is, uh, uh, it wouldn't have changed my mind either way, but uh, I certainly appreciate uh, all of the uh, information that we received tonight. Ms. Munson, did you have? Yes, I did. I want to uh, want to comment that when I looked at the amended agenda, uh, Deputy Prosecutor Domestic Violence had been crossed out and replaced with Public Safety Lip Prosecutor. And I know that is probably um, a funding title, but I was confused and so I contacted Ms. Oliphant, who explained that this person will work uh, in domestic violence, and that is what she is so exceptionally qualified for. We're very lucky to have this applicant, and I will, su I will support this. Yes, there was an error on the agenda. We always put the fund name mm -hmm. and then the fund number, and so that was inadvertently 
um, right. flipped is what happened. So, right. But uh, since it was corrected, uh, there was not information on the agenda saying what uh, what the work focus would be of the person being hired. So that's why I contacted Ms. Oliphant. I, I am absolutely thrilled uh, with this candidate. You know, I, I didn't expect when this position, I knew this position was gonna open up and I just didn't expect I would get so lucky. This is someone that is really exceptional for this job. Great. Uh, well, if there's nothing further from council, uh, we will uh, check with the public, see if there's any public comment on this request, and I don't see that there is. So uh, I think we're ready for a roll call vote. On the motion to approve the midpoint hire and amend the 2021 salary ordinance, Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Excellent. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Okay, up next is item 11, our Board of Commissioners. Council, I move to approve the Board of Commissioners request for an additional appropriation in Fund 1000-0068 General Fund Commissioners in the amount of $39,000 in the services category. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. And we have Miss um, Purdy, Angie Purdy, Commissioners yes. Administrator, who joined us by phone. Welcome. Thank you. Um, hope you guys are having a wonderful evening. I know that I'm having a horrible evening with my internet service. Um, so this request that's before you is um, we did not budget um, sufficiently for what's termed the other insurance, the non-health um, insurance that's paid by the Board of Commissioners. That's our um, liability insurance, uh, workman's comp um, insurance. And we are short, short $33,750 in that particular line. And then the second item is the um, Bloomington Economic Development um, Board. And for some reason, uh, we did not pay them in 2020 um, and, so, and, and not encumber the, the money. And so we are asking for an additional of $5,250 um, to, to make up our, our missed payment to that particular board. Okay, excellent. Thank you for the information. It looks like Mr. McKim has a question for you. Yes, on the, um, on the liability insurance, when do we find out what that bill is for the year? Is that something we know the year before or do we only find out during the current year what it's going to be? We don't find out. Um, we've asked. Um, so this is actually an interesting question. Um, we don't generally get that information until later in the year, well after the budget um, has been passed and adopted by the council. Um, we have asked to get that information earlier as possible. Um, but we are also um, looking into uh, kind of a modification, much like our health insurance, where we are somewhat um, self-insured. And so we are going to be looking at um, another option and how we can do this and possibly um, save some money, not initially, as we would need to um, develop the, the pot, if you will. On the reserve, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but um, we do believe that we it could be um, considerably beneficial to the county if we were to do um, the the self insured component. So we're working on that right now. And then for this total, how how does this compare to last year's uh, actuals for the insurance? Uh, 
I don't have that in front of me. Um, Michelle might be able to tell you um, what we paid last year because it's in our financial software. I, know that I guess what I'm really know. getting at is did, did it go way up? Did it, uh, did it go down? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it went, it went, um, it went considerably up um, and it's based on the national market, not based on our actual um, needs use. And so that's what kind of um, prompted us to look at um, a different way of providing this um, coverage to the county. Uh, it was at least 12%. Uh, I, can, I can confirm it was 12%. It may have been more than 12% of an increase. Okay, so, but it wasn't, say, a, a particularly large number of accidents or safety incidents or, or anything like that at, at, at Monroe County government. No, it actually had nothing to do with Monroe County government. Um, our claim process was actually is um, really very good, and um, it had nothing to do with that. And we were not, you know, we don't get rewarded for our good behavior. And so, um, yeah, so that's why we, again, are starting to look into the um, self-insurance side of this project. Now, it would not be completely self-insured, just much, just like our health insurance, we would have a... Provider. insurance or something. I'm sorry. Ms. McGinn. He's first. I, my, sorry, my internet is bad, but thank you. I mean, you did answer my questions. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Uh, Michelle, did you have uh, something to add? Yes, I can tell you that they... Um, because I have her budget workbook pulled up right now. So um, in 2019, um, they actually spent $703,000 um, on that fund. And then in 2020, it went to 832,000. Um, and then for 2021, they only requested uh, and was approved 800,000. So you can see uh, in the workbook where there's a steady increase. And, and since we don't get those bills until later, that would be why she needs the additional. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, Ms. Hawk? Uh, yes, yeah, so Cicero, um, a possibility of transferring around dollars in the category so as to uh, avoid doing an additional? No, um, we are running very tight this year um, in this, in, in the general fund uh, commissioner's location. And no, we've already transferred some money into the professional services. Um, however, at this point in time, we don't have the ability, we don't have the, I'll just be back at a later date if I were to transfer it from another line because we're going to need it in that particular line. So, no. Okay, Any, anything further from council? I just wanna reiterate my uh, support for looking into better lower cost options. I mean, I, I understand we're all concerned about some inflation and things going on right now, but this seems to be, this particular item seems to be accelerating rapidly to the point of hyperinflation. Um, mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's quite, a, quite an increase. And uh, we, so we'll know what the, the next, so we're at 832 this year, um, if there's another 12% increase, we'll know what that's going to be uh, towards the end of 2021. Right. We wouldn't get that information until, until closer to the end of the, of the year. However, we are working with them right now and providing data um, to our current provider um, who is looking into um, the, the self-insurance process and having a, a provider that would be the overseer um, of, of our claims. And so hoping to get that from them 
um, I think we need about the 20th of July. So hopefully by the end of the month, we would have a proposal from our current broker. Okay. Okay. Um, Ms. McKim, did you have something else to add? Sorry. Okay. And if there's nothing further from council, we'll see if there's any public comment. There's no public comment that I can see here, so we'll do a roll call vote. On the motion to approve additional appropriations and fund 1000-0068. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Wiltz? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Spinmore? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Did you say pass? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you. Sorry. Yes. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Iverson. Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. All right. And next up is item 11B. Council, I move to approve the Board of Commissioners request for an additional appropriation and fund 1114-0068 lit special purpose commissioners in the amount of $59,820.80 in the capital category. Second. Okay, Mr. McKim just made a second. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. And it looks like uh, Mr. Crone is joining us for this item. We'll give us uh, some background and information. Welcome. Yes, good evening, counselors. Hope everyone's well. Uh, this request for an additional appropriation is to replace the two uh, aging commercial C transport buses that the U Shelter currently has. Both of them, the buses they currently have are 2003 models that they obtained from uh, community corrections after the road crew program uh, was ceased. The uh, new van uh, or transit bus for other is through Midwest, Midwest Transit Corp. It does meet the state QPA guidelines, both the vendor and the vehicle. And this should take them through for at least eight to 10 years. I think the standard's been set for 18 years though. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah. they've definitely been okay. well loved and they show it. So, I, yeah, I, I got to say that's that's impressive. And um, uh, <laughs> that's great to know that, you know, vehicles that get a lot of use are getting 18 years of service. So uh, these are long past service life and the uh, the cost of repair and maintenance on them has far exceeded the value of the vehicles. Got it. All right. Let's see if there's any questions. For uh, or comments here, uh, Ms. Hawk. Yes, uh, the existing vehicles that are limping through the last gate, uh, what's planned to do with those? Uh, we will run them through the surplus process, and then the plan is to put them on through public auction on the Gov Deals website, which is a government auction house for uh, the state, the city, IU, a lot of different entities use that. And then that puts it through a bid process so that we can try to get max dollar for it. Right. I'm, I'm just mentioning that because right now, trying to find any used vehicle that will even run is getting more and more difficult. I'm hearing that from many people. Um, and so they don't want us to think that, it's, that they're worthless because the public will tell you they're not. So. No, we will get some return on these vehicles. That's absolutely correct. That's great. Okay. Any, uh, any other questions or comments? All right. We'll see if there's any public comment. Doesn't appear so. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote, please. On the motion to approve an additional appropriation and fund 1114-0068. Councilor Hawk? That, that is the, remind me that fund is the youth shelter fund, right? For the lit special purpose. Yes, it's the, yeah. just what we used yes. to call the juvenile code. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Councilor McKim? Thank you. 
Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you, councillors. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Have a good evening. Yourself as well. Okay, up next is, uh, well, we've got, we've got about 10 pages of agenda here for the next uh, <laughs> two items. So this is uh, number 12, and this is our highway department. Okay, council, I move to approve the highway department's request to unencumber appropriations of fund 1135-0000 cumulative bridge account 39390 Baby Creek Bridge number 629 in the amount of $349,010 and fund 1229-0000 uh, Lowett Special Distribution, account 31253, Hunters Creek Road, in the amount of $135,068.33, due to these projects having been established in highway grant funds and no longer needing being needed in these funds. We need a second. Yeah, Mr. McKim. Second. Uh, had second. To so we do have a motion and a second, and just to let everybody know, Mr. McCam had to take off um, for the evening. So we will need somebody to be our seconder going forward. But uh, we have that second now, and do we have any questions or uh, come? Well, actually, I think we probably need to have some information here presented to us from Ms. Shell. Yes, um, Lisa is on vacation. So she asked me to speak to this because I've been working with her. And if you'll recall, we um, earlier this year moved um, appropriations, uh, cash, and um, created grant funds for some of her um, bridge projects. And when we uh, did this, we, we tried to catch every single item, but these, this is tying up all those loose ends and I've, uh, we've researched some more. And so we believe this will take care of uh, establishing all those grant funds. So, um, so she, not only does she need to unencumber, and I'll just go ahead and mention the next couple um, items so that you know we don't have to, you know, stop again. Uh, she's also requesting the cash transfer for these um, funds um, moving forward, moving the that cash from the established funds and moving it into the grant funds. And then uh, with uh, the, there's a new um, grant fund that she needs to have the additional appropriation set in. So that's this whole process of setting up those grant funds for the highway department for her bridge projects. Okay. okay. Very good. Any, uh, any questions or uh, comments? on this item doesn't uh, appear so do we have any public comment no public comment so we'll do a roll call vote please councillor deckard yes councillor wilkes yes councillor mckim is not present councillor munson yes Councillor Hawk is not present. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Okay. Up next is item 12B. Council, I move to approve the Highway Department's request for a fund to fund transfer of cash from fund 1229 dash zero 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 low at special distribution to fund eight one six three dash zero 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 hunters creek road phase two and three grant a newly established highway project grant second okay michelle we're just moving the cash so that she can have that for her new grant fund very good any questions or comments? 
Is there any public comment? Okay, we'll have a roll call vote. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor McKinn is not present. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk is not present. Councillor Wills? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Okay, item 12C is next. Council, I move to approve the Highway Department's request for an additional appropriation in Fund 8163-0000 Hunters Creek Road Phase 2 and 3 in the amount of $135,068.33 in the services category. Second. Second. All right. Michelle? Uh, this is just establishing that line in that grant um, from the appropriations from the former former fund. Got it. Any questions? We have any public comment? Do a roll call vote, please. Councillor Munson. Yes. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Councillor Hawk is not present. Councillor Spoonmore. Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor McKim is not present, so motion passed five to zero. Okay, very good. So that wraps up item 12. We'll move on now to item 13 uh, with our probation department. Council, I move to approve the probation department's request for the creation of new account lines and to simultaneously approve additional appropriations in Fund 9105-9622 Indiana Judicial Supreme Court grant in the amount of $10,000 in the services category. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. And from the probation department, uh, we have Ms. Streit. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Good evening. Um, so this first grant is from the Indiana Office of Court Services that funds several different items for our problem solving courts. Uh, one thing that this grant funds is ongoing training for our problem solving court staff. It also funds our incentives and reinforcements such as gift cards and certificates for um, problem solving court participants. And then it also funds what we like to call barrier busters or items such as bus tickets that assist participants with transportation needs. Um, we know that through, uh, we know based on evidence-based practices that reducing barriers and then reinforcing positive thinking and positive behavior is leading to success, not only for our problem solving court participants, but also just their overall, overall well being in their lives. Um, so we're very fortunate that the Office of Court Services funds these initiatives. Um, they're small tokens, but so important for our participants. Very good, thank you. Um, we'll see if there's any questions for you here from council on this request. Any comments? Is there any public comment? Okay, we'll have a roll call vote. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor McKim is not present. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Okay, yes. we'll move on now to 13B. All right, may I interject one moment? I believe this is where I need to ask for a title change to our grant name. I'll have to do that for all three of our grants. Um, at the time, we, we didn't have the grant contracts yet, and so the grant titles need to change. So for this one, if we could change um, Indiana Judicial Supreme Court Grant instead to Problem Solving Court Grant. I move. need an official vote, or can we just? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, we uh, will need an official vote. And uh, like she said, the information came in after we had already advertised. So this is kind of like a, a follow up with these. I move that we change the name in the uh, previous uh, agenda item from 
Indiana Judicial Supreme Court grant to a problem solving court grant. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Any questions? Any comments? We have any public comment? Okay. We'll do a roll call vote. Change the name of the grant. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor McCam is not present. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Okay, next is uh, 13B. May I um, change the name in this motion? <laughs> Yes. Okay, I'm gonna try that. Let me, know, yeah. let me know if this works. Council, I move to approve the probation department's request for the creation of new account lines and to simultaneously approve additional appropriations in fund 9105-9622, known as pretrial pilot project on the agenda, now called pretrial grant in the amount of $81,278 in the personnel category. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Well done, Ms. Wilkes on that motion, I like that. Uh, Ms. Streit? Yes, yeah, so this is a grant also from Indiana Office of Court Services. Our pretrial program has been in existence since 2016. And a few months ago, we received our official three-year certification, which made us eligible to apply for ongoing funding for our program. Um, this grant funds salary and fringe benefits for a probation officer who is designated to our pretrial program. It also funds salary and fringe benefits for a deputy public defender who is required to be at all initial hearings to represent defendants on just the matter of bail and release. And then it also funds the salary of a part-time probation officer assistant who helps us deal with the stacks and stacks and stacks of data collection um, and helps us with input and analysis. Very good, thank you. Do we have any questions? Yes, Ms. Hawk. Uh, yes, when you're saying it funds those positions, you're not saying they're new positions, it's funding positions that's already in place. Is that correct? correct. Yes, Thank they're you. not new. Thank you. Any other questions? We have any public comment? Seeing none, we'll have a roll call vote, please. The motion to approve new account lines and additional appropriations and fund 9135-9622. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor McKim is not present still. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Okay, and up next is item 13C. Council, I move to approve the probation department's request to simultaneously create new account lines and approve additional appropriations in fund 9155-0000, referred to in the agenda as Veterans Court Grant, now known as Veterans Treatment Court Grant, in the amount of $38,585 in the personnel category and to amend the 2021 salary ordinance by adding account line 10055 probation officer slash case manager 35 hours ST non-exempt. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. We'll open it up for discussion. Do we have any questions? or comments, or I'm sorry, why don't we start with Ms. Wright to give us some background on this? Sure, thank you. Um, 
Indiana Office of Court Services is very generous to us as they are also awarding us this grant. This funds the salary and benefits of our existing full-time Veterans Court Probation Officer. Our Veterans Court began in 2016, and as the name implies, our, um, this problem-solving court consists only of veteran participants. We are also fortunate that our, probation, our Veterans Court case manager is himself a veteran and understands the unique needs of that population. Got it, thank you. Now do we have any questions on the request? Yes, Ms. Hawk and then Mr. Decker. Uh, yes, could you send us some stats on uh, how many you're serving and uh, just an update on uh, what's, what's happening in the Veterans Court? Certainly. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mr. Decker. Thank you very much. I just want to point out again, I think I've said this in a previous meeting. Here's another good example of outside dollars coming into this community and assisting this community. And really anyone in the public, if you ever look at our agendas, you will see a ton of that, where it is certainly the taxpayers of this community that are giving money to both federal and state uh, levels of government that turn into some of these grants, but this is, these are dollars coming into our community, helping folks. In this case, helping veterans in a way that uh, maybe not all of us are thinking of immediately when thinking helping veterans, but absolutely crucial. And equally, I wanna say we have great folks like Becca who are doing the hard work at both getting those grants and maintaining those grants. And that is an awesome thing. So it always makes me happy to see this on our agenda and that we're part of that, uh, passing those dollars on to help, help the folks in this community. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Any, uh, any additional comments or questions? Do we have any public comment? All right, we'll have a roll call vote, please. On the motion to approve new account lines, additional appropriations, and amend the 2021 salary ordinance and fund 9155-0000. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor McKim is still not present. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wilts? Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Thank you. Thank you, have a good evening. Okay, up next is item 14, our health department. Council, I move to approve the health department's request for to create account line for 0002 furniture, furniture in fund 81049621 public health emergency preparedness and to simultaneously approve a category transfer in the amount of $7,000 from the personnel category, $500,000 from the supplies category, and $1,500 from the services category for a total transfer of $9,000 to the capital category. Second. All right, uh, Ms. Cottle, welcome. Tell us about this one. Thank you. I figured I would not do a department update tonight because I figured you would get one with my nine items that I have <laughs> on your agenda. So they, I think they're all pretty, pretty easy. This, uh, our public health emergency preparedness grant runs uh, July through June. And so as we neared actually the end of the grant cycle, we had some funds that um, were not uh, spent all the way and had found that we could use some improvements really to organizational workspace uh, so that we could use the space more efficiently. Uh, we had lots of supplies that came in this year and it was a struggle to just kind of get them in the space. And the state has approved these changes. Uh, so in order to um, just pay those uh, expenses, we need to move that, that money. And this, again, has all been approved at the state level already, uh, but just will allow us to utilize those funds more fully and just be more prepared and efficient going forward. 
Very good. Any uh, questions or comments for Ms. Caudill? Is there any public comment? Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Spinmore? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor McKim is not present. Councilor Wilkes? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Motion passed six to zero. All right. Uh, Council, I move to approve the health department's request to create new account lines and simultaneously approve additional appropriations and fund 8104-9622 public health emergency preparedness in the amount of $16,828 in the personnel category, $5,172 in the supplies category, and $3,000 in the services category for a total of $25,000. Second. All right. So I just mentioned that the grant cycle for public health emergency fund program is uh, July through June. And this is to appropriate the new grant cycle. Uh, the, we have our award letter. Uh, we have our uh, deliverables. We have, are still waiting on the actual grant uh, agreement to get those signed, but we do have uh, a letter even stating making sure that we knew that we could start in July spending those funds. For example, we have part time staff in this um, and those would be covered. So this is just to appropriate those funds. Excellent. Do we have any questions on this request? Any comments? Mr. Iverson. Just out of curiosity, over the past year of the pandemic, um, how is this part time person used? They have predominantly been uh, working registration at our vaccine clinics. Uh, they have been one of our staff people regularly at the IU site so that we always had uh, health department staff present there. Uh, they were at, uh, regularly at the convention center when we were at the convention center. And as we kind of transition they will be doing more work that's kind of in the office at their after action report and doing those things, but will also continue to help with outreach uh, clinics because they're very, very skilled now at registering people and getting them through that process. Great. And they enjoy that's it. Well, well that's, that's important too. Yeah. All right. Anything further from council? Is there any public comment? Do a roll call vote, please. On the motion to approve new account lines and additional appropriations and fund 8104-9622. Councillor McKim is not present. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor Hawk is not present. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Spinmore? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. All right, thank you, Ms. Miller. Council, I move to approve the health department's request to create new account lines and simultaneously approve additional appropriations in fund 8126-9622 Futures Clinic Title 10 in the amount of $122,700 in the personnel category. $28,222 in the supplies category and $22,000 in the services category for a total of $179,922. Second. Was that all add up there, Ms. Cottle? I had 172. Did you, is that what you said? 172? I did not. It's typed wrong in my, I, I would like to change the total. Um, of those amounts to $172,922. Yeah. My apologies. My apologies. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. It takes all of us, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, could have been my, my mistake. So uh, these Title X funds are from the Indiana Family Health Council. They are for family planning services that provides uh, support and is the primary funding for Futures Family Planning Clinic. Uh, we generally get our Title X dollars in at least two lump sums. 
Uh, so our current award is 60961 with that amount expected again this fall. And then this grant runs April through March. And so as we near the end, uh, then the Indiana Family Health Council will look at all of our budgets uh, in December and January and see if somebody needs extra funding, somebody else has extra funding available, and then they will start to do amendments and move those funds around. This also includes what we anticipate receiving in terms of revenue from third party payments. Uh, we do accept insurance at Futures Clinic. Um, so very few of our patients actually have to pay anything. Uh, they can make a donation if they like, uh, but we do bill third party payers. So we, we have a staff person who's great at doing that billing and uh, we, we have increased our revenue over the years. So we're, we're pleased about that. And this does also include what's considered an in-kind of up to $19,000 for long acting reversible contraceptives that comes from Indiana Family Health Council as well. So we just wanted to make sure that there was uh, a place for that, that that money was appropriated. What we've experienced in the past sometimes is we didn't have that in the budget and then we had to kind of frantically get it when we had that opportunity. So this is to fund us um, going forward. All right, let's see if we have any questions or comments. Ms. Hawk. Does this fund also uh, cover some expenses for parking for some of the folks coming downtown or any kind of transportation? It, it does not. Um, at one point we had, and I wanna say it was another small grant that we had gotten to help us pay right. for parking, but we currently do not have that ability. So you don't have that now. Um, it would be nice if we could do that again in some manner. So let's work on that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Wilkes. Yeah, I'd just like to point out, as Councillor Decker did in the previous agenda item, that this is yet another example of money coming in through the hard work of this department. And the number of um, times we appropriate grants for the health department, as well as uh, probation and community corrections. It's just, it's astonishing. It really is. And the, the services provided to the community are um, impressive. So I uh, just wanted to point that out as well. Don't leave out the highway department. <laughs> There's a huge one there. True. That new position that we got for the health department, I'm sure is <laughs> trial by fire with all the grants and everything that come through there. So <laughs> Good. Any further questions? Okay. Uh, any public comment? All right. We will do a roll call vote. On the motion to approve new account lines and additional appropriations and fund 8126-9622. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Wilts? Yes. Councillor McKim is not present, so motion passes six to zero. Council, I move to approve the health department's request for an additional appropriation and fund 8138-9622 immunization in the amount of $60,008 in the services category. Second. Motion and a second. All right. Mm, wonderful. This is our routine vaccination grant. We have received this now for several years. It, it funds our Vaccine for Children program, and that is a partnership with IU Health Community Health Services, where we contract for our uh, nursing services. And this is the exact same amount that we received last year in the state, uh, simply just kind of 
kept it the same uh, given all the circumstances that were going on. There were no, um, no changes at all to that. So this again runs July through June um, and is a routine vaccination, primarily vaccine for children, but uh, are looking at all of those other childhood vaccinations that we need to make sure everybody is getting and up to date on that they may have missed during the last year and a half. Great. Any questions, comments? Any public comment? Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Claire Spinmore? Yes. Councillor McKim is not present. Councillor Duggar? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Council, I move to approve the Health Department's request for an additional appropriation in Fund 8150-9621 TANTH Futures in the amount of $26,697.84 in the personnel category, $2,496.53 in the supplies category, and $4,093.49 in the services category for a total of $33,287.86. Second. Right. Yay. So back to Futures Clinic. TANF is the other, and it is temporary aid um, or assistance to needy families. Uh, still family planning money, and this is the other portion of funds that support Futures Clinic. Uh, this is a federal grant that actually runs October through September. We always get it in the spring sometime. As I mentioned, that Title 10 comes, it's April through March. Many times the, at the national level, that Title 10 money is it awarded to Indiana Family Health Council until after April. So we usually get the, these funds first and we use them first. When I came to you back in April, we appropriated $64,000 and uh, change because that's what we anticipated getting. And we actually received more funds and we had not included revenue. So this, these additional funds would be added to the previous appropriation to, um, make, to meet that full award plus revenue that we anticipate. Got it. Any questions? or comments? Any public comment? Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Spinmore? Yes. Councillor McKim is not present. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Council, I move to approve the Health Department's request for an additional appropriation in Fund 8180-9622, Disease Intervention-STD in the amount of $10,003.11 in the personnel category, and to simultaneously approve a category transfer of $10,753 from the services category to the personnel category. Second. Okay. I wonder if this is a little bit of housekeeping cleanup as well. We came to you earlier to uh, appropriate this, these funds. We have received these uh, DIS uh, STD funds since the 80s. They were in the health fund. I think it was the very first grant the health department ever received. So they've always been there. But the grant cycle did change from April through March. And so this was our opportunity to split those out. Um, when the award came, um, it was a little bit different than what we had anticipated. And it, you'll see another item that I have. Um, we had 
put our loss to care funds in this and they came as a separate grant. So this is just really kind of cleaning up, uh, making sure we have money in insurance line to, to pay all of the, the benefits that go with this and make sure we have all those things covered. All right, thank you. Any questions? <clears throat> Is there any public comment? All right, uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor McKim is not present. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Council, I move to approve the health department's request for an additional appropriation in fund 8183-9622, lost to care, in the amount of $17,925 in the services category. Second. And I just mentioned this, this is our lots to care funds. These are additional funds that will help us, will actually be working with Positive Link um, to make sure that clients who may have HIV infection don't get um, out of care and kind of lose that um, option and uh, the care that they so desperately need. But it also means that they don't have multiple agencies trying to locate and contact them. Uh, so we can work together to do that. And essentially, uh, if you think about it, we will be paying for a few hours of a DIS through their case managers. Um, so that's what these funds will be used for. Excellent. Uh, any questions for Ms. Call? Yes, Mr. Iverson. Hey, off the top of your head, do you know how many individuals in Monroe County are lost to care? I do not. Okay. That, um, yeah. Yeah, it's kind I, of a lot of field <laughs> yeah, I do not. And our disease intervention specialists have actually cover 12 counties. So again, um, working with Positive Link, who also covers multiple counties, it's kind of a win-win that way. But certainly there, there's lots of people who, um, and this is true in the past, maybe more than today, but still true today, that you find out you're in you have HIV, you, it can be very difficult to get straight into care just because you emotionally are not ready to deal with that. Yeah, yeah. And so sometimes people get lost to care that way. Sometimes they start care, maybe they move, they go somewhere else, something happens, um, and they just kind of lose that case touch with that case manager. And we just wanna make sure that they're, they're getting their needs met and not falling through the cracks. This is fantastic. And I'll, I'll note too, this is multiple instance this night that we've been talking about the need for case management in different areas. So important. Thank you. Got it. Anything further from council? Any public comment? All right, we'll do a roll call vote. A motion to approve a new account line and an additional appropriation and fund 8183-9622. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor McKim is not present. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Okay. Council, I move to approve the health department's request for a category transfer in fund 8908-0000 COVID health cares in the amount of $39,600 from the supplies category to the services category. Second. Great. This is uh, funding that we received from the Indiana Department of Health to set up our Morton Street uh, community COVID testing site that runs through uh, July at this point. Uh, we were able to, to fund that site, not just with this money and this grant, but also with um, the help of the city, with Indiana University, with the commissioners, 
um, and the hospital to, who all kind of pitched in those extra funds that were available. These funds were actually um, based on deliverable. And so they were sort of upfront money, if you will. Did take us a little while to get that second uh, payment, but we have it. So the cash is here in this fund, but in order to look at this, the needs that we have, we don't need them in supplies, but we do need them in that services category to finish out this uh, clinic. Very good. Any questions or comments for Ms. Cottle? Is there any public comment? We'll do a vote. Councillor McKim is not present. Councillor Deckard? Yes. <laughs> Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor Hawk is not present. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Council, I move to approve the health department's request for a category transfer in fund 8126-9621 Futures Clinic Title 10 in the amount of $800 from the services category to the supplies category. Second. All right. Last but not least, right? So <laughs> back to still title. still got J through N coming up here. Right? <laughs> you do, you do. <laughs> yes, but um, kind of going back to Title 10, where we were a little bit ago, and I mentioned that um, the April is actually kind of when this ends. And so we were reviewing just those last um, payments kind of are after the fact, right? So there are still things that you have to, bills that come in that are paid for April, but you don't get them paid later. So as we were reconciling things, we found um, that we needed some additional funds in the supply line. And so we're moving those, uh, asking you to do that category transfer. For all transparency, we also had an, a small in-house that we did in the personnel category as well. So just cleaning up the end of the grant cycle, uh, making those adjustments. Okay, do we have any questions or comments? Do we have any public comment? All right, we'll do a roll call vote. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Hawk is not present. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor McKim is not present. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Thank you all very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Ms. Cottle. Have a good evening. And yes, that wraps up a very comprehensive uh, health department <laughs> agenda item. And we'll now move on to, what are we at? 15, item 15. Item 15 is the- And this is me, yeah, this is, Ms. Wiltz, you can take a little break on this one. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so this is our criminal justice working group appointments. And um, I don't think we're quite ready yet to make a permanent appointment. I still have, uh, unless there are nominations that anyone would like to make from the floor, I'm not yet prepared to make a nomination. I uh, haven't had an opportunity to uh, have those conversations with everybody yet. So I apologize for kind of probably at our last meeting with the, uh, uh, our last meeting with the, uh, regarding the criminal justice uh, committee, uh, I probably set the expectations a little too soon for that. So I apologize. I will be, uh, if you don't mind, uh, I'll be attending the upcoming, uh, the first meeting that we have, and then we'll, uh, we'll continue to work on a permanent uh, appointment from the county council. But I don't think we need to take any vote here tonight on that. So that was more of an update than anything because we do not have any nominations to make. But I will be attending and I'll keep everybody updated um, on uh, the developments with the uh, working, the small working group as we have those uh, meetings here going forward. Do we have any questions about that? Any comments? 
Okay. Uh, so now we'll move on to item 16. Council, I move to approve the June 8th, 2021 regular session and the June 22nd, 2021 work session minutes as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the minutes. Do we have any questions, changes, modifications, edits that need to be made to the minutes? Now, is Mr. McKim back with us? I see, I, I saw a hand go up. Mr. McKim, are you there? No. I see it too. I saw it too, yeah. <laughs> and I sure miss him on those I miss, seconds. I miss Mr. McKim, yeah. He's in the yeah. attendees room. There you go. There we go. Is he, is he back? Oh, there been promoted. Oh, dear. Okay, well, um, We'll see. <laughs> Gosh. Looks like something, something's coming there. I, I see a, a the TV. <laughs> okay, well, I think <laughs> Mr. McKim. All right. He is he's back and joined us. Um, we are on the minutes and we saw your hand get raised, <laughs> but uh, so we didn't know if you, this was some kind of an anomaly where you had something to say about the minutes. I was just trying to get promoted back to panel, yes. but it sounds All like right. I came just in the nick of time for the most important vote of the night. Most, yes, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, so we'll see if, the, if there's any public comment on the minutes. Doesn't appear so. We will do a roll call vote to approve the minutes. Councillor Wills? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? I'm sorry, I was, I've got somebody out there that needed something. Are you voting on the minutes? minutes. Yes. Okay, yes. I'm okay. sorry. It's okay. Councillor Spinmore? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. All right. I'm glad we. We got that one out of the way. And next up is uh, item 17. Just a reminder to everybody, um, we kind of have a standing item here on our agenda for boards and commissions. We do have one vacancy on the Women's Commission. Again, if anyone's interested in that, please visit the Monroe County Government webpage uh, and, uh, or the website rather, and um, uh, check out an application and, and submit it for us. We'd love to hear from anybody who's interested. Okay. Uh, and that's all the uh, vacancies that we currently have. Up next is item 18. Do we have any council members who'd like to make comments or remarks prior to adjournment? Mr. Iverson. Yeah, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the importance uh, that is ongoing to get vaccinated. Uh, it's, it's very important now that the Delta variant is making its way uh, through the United States. And, you know, we're already seeing that our friends over in Europe are having to take pretty drastic measures uh, due to this. So uh, I would encourage all of you to um, lean on those family and friends that you have that are, are that still have those outstanding questions about getting vaccinated and refer them to some great resources on the Monroe County Health Department's website. And uh, let's, let's get vaccinated because this really is our way out of of this this coronavirus and our best shot at getting back to normal um so yeah push those vaccines good message thank you sir uh miss hawk um i apologize for having to hop up so many times I wasn't expecting the people to show up today um i want just this is time for council comments is that yes. right? yes. <laughs> sorry um i just wanted to say um I guess I wasn't terribly shocked to hear about President uh, Umar's, uh decision. Uh, he has a, a beautiful young family, and, and I certainly understand that he wants to, to make sure that he has all the, the time necessary to be the very best dad he can possibly be, and I applaud him for that. Uh, certainly... Um, but I did want to say that uh, I appreciate what you have done so far on the council and 
we have 18 more months to go, so there's still a lot of work yet to do. Um, and um, I just I just wanted to express those concerns that uh, we many times lose great council members because career choices, family choices, sometimes it's hard to work at all in. And um, believe me, if I had grandchildren, I wouldn't be here. I don't have, so here I am. Uh, thank you very much. It, and it will, uh, will definitely be business as usual uh, for the next 18 months here. And uh, I'm gonna look forward and really relish uh, this, uh, the, the remaining time in my term, but a lot of work uh, left to do here. So that's gonna be uh, part of the fun as well too. Any further council comments? I actually have one, uh, one other announcement. So I am, uh, I'm gonna be going on vacation uh, at the end of this month. I'm gonna be going to beautiful Harbor Springs, Michigan, enjoying the Northern latitudes up there, the cooler air, that'll be nice. Uh, get up there with uh, my family. So I will not be at the uh, work session in July. Uh, Ms. Wiltz will be leading uh, that meeting. Um, and it looks like it's going to be a very um, uh, healthy agenda uh, that is shaping up uh, for that as well, too. But rest assured, I will be uh, kind of watching things and, and uh, catching up on the meetings uh, when I'm able to when we get back in town. So, But uh, everybody's in very good hands with Ms. Wiltz, as we all know. Um, but just wanted to uh, remind everybody of that. Any other comments before we adjourn? All right, well, uh, it's been a pleasure tonight and we will, well, I will see you all for our, uh, at the August regular session meeting, but the next uh, meeting for the council will be uh, at the July work session. Have a good evening, we are adjourned. Thanks. Bye everybody.